Well, thank you, Simon, and uh, let me also welcome you uh, to Pittsburgh and to Western Pennsylvania. I appreciate folks traveling far uh, to come and, and, and work together around manufacturing, and you, you couldn't have come to a better place because one thing we know how to do here is make things, and we've been making things here for, for more than a century, and, you know, whether it was the, you know, what many of us would consider traditional or older manufacturing uh, products like steel and aluminum and glass, uh, et cetera, um, or the, the new modern robotics, artificial intelligence, as we've transitioned to where uh, things are and where things are going when it comes to manufacturing, uh, robotics manufacturing, automated manufacturing, 3D printing, all those type of things, we're actually, again, leading, leading the nation and leading the world in doing those. And, you know, we're very fortunate in, in this region uh, to have a lot of the, the natural resources that, you know, came around with coal uh, are obviously the water systems that we have, uh, the first oil wells that were, that were developed here, the first gas wells that were developed here, and now having Marcellus Shale under our very feet as, as, as the world transitions, um, using natural gas as, as a great bridge full to sustainability. Uh, we're very fortunate in where we, where we are. But we've also used those resources to do some really good things and develop great educational facilities like Carnegie Mellon, the University of Pittsburgh, uh, that have been doing things again for over a century. Uh, developing a workforce that knows how to make things and knows how to do things in a sustainable way. Having that, that, that infrastructure of training and skills and upskilling that is so needed uh, in manufacturing uh, and, and, and being a, a worldwide competitive marketplace, we can do those things. And it's just a great, great place to live. So when we're able to attract the type of talent and the type of industries uh, that want to be here, um, it, is, it is in large part because, you know, people do want to be here. Uh, people want to be part of, 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 a, of a great community. And, you know, for, for a century, as I mentioned, we made the steel that built the world that built the rail, that built the bridges, that built the, the skyscrapers that, that are out there. Um, so we were exporting steel for, 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 for decades and decades and decades. And then about 40 years ago, we, we, steel didn't, didn't do so well. And then we started exporting young people. That wasn't a good thing for us. Well, that's changed now. We're, we're, we're keeping our young people and actually importing more young people. And the diversity as we, as we attract people from around the world is something that we're very, very proud of. Um, quality of life, just wonderful, wonderful neighborhoods, wonderful cultural amenities, beautiful rivers and trails and parks and green spaces that people want to live and people want to raise their families in. It's a big part of what we do. And we want to use those assets, those rivers, not just to uh, as an industrial usage, but also as a quality of life and an industrial use that we can do those things about. Oh, and by the way, it's still a pretty affordable place to live. It's an affordable place to do business. So you can do, you can provide the energy that you need for your, for your products. You can provide the type of transportation systems you need to your products. And you're within not very far from 50% of the world market, of the, of the population base here in North America, which is obviously a very important field, a very important thing. Um, and we're becoming younger as well. Over the last decade, the census that came out, we grew 20% of our 25 to 34-year-old workforce, which is actually double uh, the rate of, of the rest of the country and what they've done as young people are, are drawn to the, to the opportunities that are here, to the quality of life that is here, and the affordability that is here, and to be part of something, quite frankly, that is, that is bigger than any individual. And we were very proud just last week uh, that uh, our U.S. Secretary of, of, of Energy, Secretary Jennifer Granholm, brought the world here, over three countries, uh, three do, excuse me, three dozen countries that came here 600 people, six, excuse me, 6,000 people. I'm getting my numbers. Got to add zeros on things or I get myself in trouble. Over 6,000 people that came here to talk about how are we going to decarbonize? How are we going to deal with climate change? How are we going to deal with the, the, the challenges that all of us, whatever products we make, whatever country we're from, and whatever part of the world that we're from that we're all dealing with? Um, we're seeing this just, just today 
uh, the, the, the issues that are happening down in, down in the Florida Keys, uh, the Florida Gulf with, with, with hurricanes. And we know these weather events are going to continue, and we've got to continue to work uh, to, to move forward on, on, on climate. So all of these things are things that we do and we work together with. And the last thing I will say before I leave is one thing about Pittsburgh in this region is we work together. We come together pragmatically to solve problems. So the public sector, working with the private sector, working with our universities, working with our philanthropic community, working with our labor unions and community groups is something we all work together. So this is the type of collaboration that I know is happening over the next couple of days uh, for people coming together and comparing best practices uh, and learning, again, from each other all the things we can do to make to make our, our companies, our organizations, and our world a better place. So I want to, again, welcome you to Pittsburgh. We're glad to have you here. Enjoy yourself, and uh, God bless. Thank you.